Maybe I'm crazy, but I might have to quit the Dolphins. Why? I don't know how. Like you, family wise, I'm gonna be able to do that. But yeah, you can't. I they're they're going against what I believe in. I believe very strongly top about five, tanking. Top five most interesting teams. Mm, yeah, thank you for reminding me of that. <laughs> Appreciate that. It's supposed to be my partner. Have each other's back. It's cool. Strong start. <laughs> maybe I'm Casey. Maybe I'm Casey. Maybe I'm not. Maybe I'm not. Welcome to Maybe I'm Crazy Podcast. I'm Joy Taylor. That's Judas. Ooh, hello. Brandon How Newman. Uh, I, Paul. I'm more of a Paul. Welcome back. Thank you so much. Um, <laughs> yeah, I did say they were there. Actually, I could still be right about that. They could still be the most no interesting team because way. let's just say I'm completely wrong about them being the replacement for the Giants as the worst team in the NFL. Mm-hmm. And uh, Josh Rosen actually, you know, performs a miracle. And makes the Dolphins front office look silly. It's possible. Doubtful, but yes, but possible. All things are possible. Mm-hmm. Um, we're gonna have Hugh Jackson on the show today. I am very excited to talk to Hugh. S- excited is the word you're gonna use? Yes, because I have lots of really good questions. For yeah, him. I'm I'm nervous because I got to keep the same energy. You know what I mean? And, and when you when oh, the person's no, in the room, I'm always gonna keep the same energy. I just we're just a Baker podcast, so to have Hugh on, it's like no, we gonna keep it real. I don't know. But I. Here's my thing about Hugh, and he's not here, so I'm going to say it first. Yes, let's do it now. I have sneaky suspicions, a.k.a. I've been listening. You know, I like to listen. Yes. And, you know, he's uh, Hugh, he was slick now, okay? He yes. has a suit on today. He just slides in some things about, you know, what may have actually gone down. Because, you know, mm. coaches don't really actually, in a lot of cases, have as much power as we, like, as fans, like to think that they do. True that, true that. Because talking about the front office is, quite frankly, boring. No one cares. Right, yeah. So, in we general, we put all of the onus of what happens to the team on the head coach. When, right. in fact, in a lot of these draft rooms, the owners come stomping in there. Or the mm. analytics guy has more power. Or the GM, who doesn't really know what he's doing and doesn't have a football background, all of a sudden slides in with this great idea. And the coaches get overruled, but they're the ones that generally get fired because they are the ones on the sideline that we see making all the calls. Right. Which might have had something to do with what went down with you in Cleveland. The entire time? Well, I'm going to ask him. Okay. Because that's what I feel. All right. That's what, I can't wait. We're going to give our division predictions and our Super Bowl predictions. <laughs> yes, exactly. Um, today. Mm-hmm. So you will find out uh, what, we what Brandon's wrong about. And um, what Joy will be wrong about later. Uh, I'm very rarely wrong. So we'll see. Basically, I'm basically I'm spoiling everything for Steelers you. Steelers win the Super Bowl. That's not that. Maybe that's the case. Maybe not. It's called tease for a reason. No, that's what you said last year. Um, well, I was wrong. Okay. All right. Jalen Hurts uh, has himself a game. We'll talk about that. The Cowboys and Zeke and the pie is getting smaller. Mm. Pie. Uh, big time culture report. There's a lot going on yes. in the in the culture right now. And uh, Lonzo is not done talking about the Lakers. Um, obviously, the Dolphins are huge losers this week, and uh, LeBron is also in there because he's doing something inexplicable. Also, uh, two basketball losers this week because Team USA won, but did they? Mm, debatable. Yes. Um, but let's get started with Hugh Jackson. All right. Hugh Jackson is joining us. Hey. Thank you for joining us on the Maybe I'm Crazy podcast. Thank you for having me. We appreciate you uh, stopping by. Okay. Looking sharp today. Thank you. Um, now, you brought some tequila in for Colin. Uh-huh. Um, and Reggie. And Reggie. Mm-hmm. USC. Yes. USC Connects. Let's right. not forget. Um, so tell us a little. <laughs> that's true. Tell us I'm a not little paying bit. him, though. <laughs> wasn't ready for the trap. I told you that he was bringing it to Oh, that. man. Um, Grand Lienda. Uh-huh. And it's organic. We love organic. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. in 100% organic. Where California. can people find your tequila? Uh, Wally Wines. Go to wallywines.com. And uh, I'm sure they're carrying it. Uh, it's one of the distributors uh, here in L.A. That, that's carrying our tequila. So are you are you just a tequila guy? Are you a wine guy, too? I am a wine guy, too. But I've, I've fallen in love with tequila because it's so good. This tequila is so good. Uh, you don't have to really mix it with anything. Normally, when you think of tequila, you think people have to make margaritas. Right. I mean, I think this is a drink and sip wine. I, I think you, I mean, uh, tequila, I should say. Really? Yeah. Really? Mm-hmm. You got to try it. What, what made you a tequila? I'm originally from Kentucky, so I'm a whiskey guy. What what's what does what the libations, what the tequila give you? What's, what's it about tequila? Well, tequila, what people don't understand, it is really the only upper, you know? Mm. In the alcohol world, you know, so I think uh, I didn't know that. I think a lot of people would probably argue their experiences with tequila, right? Speak otherwise. That's what all that other tequila, (laughs) (laughs) right? Right. Well stuff. Absolutely. You get Grand Lander, it's good. All right, so we'll have to check that out. Um, So the biggest stories, uh, in my opinion, from the NFL preseason have been Mm -hmm. running backs and Mm -hmm. the holdouts, and it's kind of 
uh, a pendulum swing with running backs one year they're super valuable and they all get paid and the next year it's like what's what's the position even good for anymore mm-hmm. which is kind of where we are right now right obviously we're trying to figure out what's going on with zeke melvin gordon's not going to show up what do you make of the whole pushback uh, on running backs because i feel like it's a mistake to devalue them i totally agree i mean i think uh Probably the best friend of a quarterback is a running back because you can turn to hand him the ball. Mm-hmm. And the guys you just mentioned, they're they're unbelievable, believably talented. Uh, Zeke, Melvin Gordon, those guys are part of the reason why those teams went. So uh, to me, I think uh, we don't need to get caught up in this analytic world about we don't need to pay this guy this much money or that much money. Right. I think you got to look at your football team and understand truly how you're winning. And those guys have a lot to do with those organizations winning. So that said, mentioning Zeke and Melvin Gordon, do you think that Dallas should pay Zeke what he's maybe not what he's asking for, but he but should he be paid in the Todd Gurley range? Like I think he should million? be paid. There's no question. I think he's one of the elite running backs in all of pro football. Does it give you any pause that Zeke is kind of a bit of a liability off the field? Oh no. Do you need to work through those things? I mean, mm-hmm. he's still on your football team. You know, so that says that there's a belief in him and there's a trust in him. Uh, are there some things that I think needs to be tied to what you're about to paint? No question. Now, I'm look. I, I think the Chargers are super talented, but I'm they're still the Chargers, and right. I, I try to get over that. Mm-hmm. But then they're they trying to get over it too. <laughs> a reason to not get over it. So I don't like. I think not having Melvin Gordon on the squad this year is a mistake. I think you have a very limited window to win Super Bowls in this league, and Philip Rivers has been there a long time, mm-hmm. and they have that Chargers thing. Like mm-hmm. I think. Losing Melvin Gordon is is a mistake. I think he should have paid him. I, I agree. I think Anthony Lynn. I'm not trying to speak for him. I have not talked to him about it, but he's a former running back himself, mm-hmm. you know, and a running back coach, and that's how he ascended up in the National Football League. So I would think that he knows without question that he needs this young man on his team on this on his team in order for them to be successful. So hopefully it'll come to a resolution here pretty soon as well. Have you ever dealt with a holdout? I have. You know, I've have had that situation before. and It's not fun, you know, but I think you have to prepare yourself in today's NFL for any and everything because these things do happen. So how does it work? Because I imagine as a head coach or as a coach, you're you. I mean, you know, when guys are holding out and mm-hmm. any guy that's going to hold out is going to be a top level guy. Otherwise, they're just going to be at camp mm-hmm. and trying to make the team. So yeah. it's going to be somebody who's going to impact the team in a dramatic way. That's why they're holding out. So mm-hmm. do is it something that lingers with the players or is it just like media asking questions? Because I imagine that it's something that really like the front office and the owners are dealing with. Well, you, you said it, but the players, you know, they there there's an unwritten rule. You know, you're not really supposed to comment right. on another man's situation. Now, mm-hmm. do the players want that player there, especially if he's going to contribute to winning? And like you said, the, we're talking about the upper upper echelon players. So yeah, they want those guys there on their football team because they know they give them the best chance to win, but most players will not say anything. Um, obviously, the front office, you know, they, they're going to hear, you know, the rumblings in the locker room. They're going to hear the things that are being said, and sometimes that could push the needle a little bit uh, as you move forward. So you were in this situation um, with Baker and mm-hmm. Tyrod Taylor. I am a big proponent of – you don't get better at something by watching someone else do it. No doubt. Now, there's obviously levels to that. It's not an absolute, absolute but for the most part, I think that that's how it works. If mm-hmm. there wasn't you know, fans watching and you know, the pressures of money and all of that, then guys would just go out there and play right. and, in, in a sense, get better. So before we get to Baker in that situation, how do you think the Daniel Jones situation will play out in New York? Well, I think it, it might play out somewhat similar to what had happened for Baker. Mm-hmm. I think – as a head coach, you're responsible for the whole team, you know, and I think when you bring in a player and you have a marquee player that's there, you know, their situation is here's Eli Manning, Super Bowl winning quarterback. Right. You have to do right by him because the players are watching that. For how long? Well, as long as it takes for you to, you know, really vet it out and say that, True. hey, look, this guy is ready, you know, mm-hmm. because the team has to believe that he's ready to win. You know, everybody understands that there's young, talented players. But if your locker room is still not sold that that guy can go be the man, you really need to work through that with them because it will show itself. And then they'll be more accepting of the decision. But if you just put him in there and you're talking about replacing Eli Manning like now, 
I think that's yeah. hard. That's hard for the locker room to get through that because you got another player saying they're going to do the same thing to me. Mm. Another player saying they're going to do the same thing to me. So mm. you have to do it the right way. It's really important. I do think there is something to – we always whine and complain about teams not taking care of veterans right. and not doing right by guys. Mm-hmm. And then it appears the Giants are trying <laughs> to do right by Eli Manning. Eli Manning. Right. I hated when they benched him. I thought it was a colossal mistake, and it was it – was, just pure and utter nonsense because they weren't replacing him with somebody who they were trying to see how they were going to develop. It was right. Geno Smith. Mm-hmm. I think it was even Webb. Well, in theory, it was supposed <laughs> to be Davis Webb, but like yeah. he's your third stringer. Right. This is right. not the time. Like yeah. it, it was a disaster of a situation. Um, and I, I don't know if they're still making up for that or if they just want to be patient with Daniel Jones. But and, and not that I mean, look. What what a what a turnaround Daniel Jones has had from right, being right. like ridiculed in the mm-hmm, draft to mm-hmm. now being like we want to see him start. So right. credit to him or credit to whoever is putting him in the best position to look like he's ready to start. But I mean, should he should he be out there? Like, is he going to learn? What do you really learn from sitting behind Eli Manning in this situation? Well, again, like, what's the value of that? I, I think the value uh, is is twofold. I think one, he's going to learn how to prepare in the National Football League, how to defeat the defenses within his division because that's how you have to win first and foremost. Mm -hmm. And so where else could you get that experience uh, or that knowledge, I should say, from then uh, Eli Manning? The other part is just to really truly understand what uh, the week is like for a pro quarterback because there's so much more that you need to do than college football. I mean, I think it's uh, way different. And some guys can get stuck in a process because they really don't know what the process is. Right, so right, right. once you learn those things, uh, you know, can you give the stamp of approval that a guy is probably ready? Probably so. But I think that is learned. That is not understood when the young uh, college quarterback walks into an organization and say, I'm here, you know, there's more to it than that. So then that's really a credit to any rookie quarterback that comes out, out and just has a – a tremendous year no doubt or the franchise and organization that he gets drafted into because there's a a core value beliefs that someone gets inserted in versus you start from the beginning i was a big fan of what you did with tyrod taylor and how baker mayfield was able to watch because you got a guy who took a team to the playoffs yes uh a true leader someone who like you said we saw hard knocks gets in earlier Mm -hmm. there's learning what to do you saw the benefits of patrick mahomes sitting out realizing what a week in the NFL will do, traveling, staying home, by all those different things to be a complete quarterback. So are the Giants sound enough as an organization for Daniel Jones to step in and actually see success, say, week five, week six in the NFL season? And I think that's a, even a bigger question. I think you just hit on something that's so true. Is the organization ready for Daniel Jones? Mm. You know, I think that's, you know, everybody just look at it as winning, you know, but there's a lot of things that come with this, you know. So I truly believe that, yeah, I think as you go through it, they will know. They will know when it's time to play this young man. I mean, uh, obviously it looks like it's sooner rather than later. And if it is, it is. But at the same time, I think there's a respect level of doing things the right way in your organization, especially as a head coach, Mm -hmm. because if not, it could really hurt you. So another team that's kind of in this situation, although they have announced that Fitzpatrick is starting. Um, full disclosure, I am a Dolphins fan. <laughs> um, kind of forced. You have to be. Uh, yes, right. yeah, kind of forced. Although I, I did family. start with Dan Marino because he's a pit guy. <laughs> so I'm an original Dolphins fan on top of being a forced Dolphins fan. But I've still remained uh, somewhat loyal. Um, I split my time between the Steelers so I can mm-hmm. stay sane. But <laughs> <laughs> they have said they're going to start Fitzpatrick, which I don't like because they're already in a bad situation. And we know what Fitzpatrick is. You know, we've kind of come up with I'm buying into Collins theory that they're going to play Fitzpatrick for the first four games and then put Rosen in okay. after the bye. But Josh Rosen has had a, a just an atrocious like entry into the NFL. Absolutely. Like I feel horrible for him. The Cardinals was a disaster of a situation. I didn't hold that against him to begin with. But now he's at the Dolphins. And he's, I mean, they're basically in a tanking situation here. So what do you do with a guy like Josh Rosen, who you have very limited high level talent around him and he's expected to go out and prove that this is, this is a job he should keep? It's tough, you know, but I think those are decisions that the organization has to make because everything in that situation says play the younger player. Mm-hmm. Right. I mean, everything says Unlike that. the Daniel Jones situation. Absolutely. Right. I mean, it's just they're, they're in different – you know, all these situations are different. I don't right. care how you look at them. They're not all cookie cutter and this is how it is. So I think this one's different. I think you would think that they would say, let's find out what we have 
in this first round pick mm-hmm. that we acquired from the Cardinals because we need to know because it makes a difference in what we do the years moving forward. Mm-hmm. Right. Because if he can do it, then all of a sudden we we have our guy. Right. Yeah. And if he can't, then we know what we need to do. So I think that's different in 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 a sense that boy you would think that they would play him right away. Yeah, I I agree. But they don't listen to they're me. Not do, that. Um, <laughs> do you think that they are tanking because they're claiming that they're not tanking? Now, I don't think the players tank and I don't think the coaches tank, but do you think that the organization is tanking? Well, let me say this. I think you said it best. I think that's first of all, I think that's a word we don't use in the National Football right. League, which Amen. is tanking. Um, but I think you said it best. I don't know a coach who uh, is worth anything as a competitor that would say, I'm here to lose. Right. I don't think any players who work as hard as these men do go to any game and say, you know, we have no chance to win. So it has to be higher than that. You know, I mean, like you said, management someplace, someone's had a discussion that maybe this is what's best for our future. And um, but I, I don't think any coach would ever accept that. I don't think we know how to accept that. Right. What, what does that mean? Our, mm. contra- our contract doesn't say go lose. Right. It says go win. So I think that's going to be really important about how they shape the narrative and how the narrative is going to be shaped in Miami of what they were really trying to do when it's all said and done. I personally don't understand, even in the NBA, which, um, you know, we know that one guy can change the course of Mm -hmm. future of the NBA, let Mm -hmm. alone just one organization or city in the NBA. But it's a star driven league and there's a whole lot less players in that situation. Mm -hmm. So tanking or the idea of just, you know, getting rid of players and acquiring all these draft picks. Mm -hmm. I, I don't understand how you can build a culture that's based on losing Mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden you're (laughs) supposed to win i I mean it's it's an elementary concept that i i still to this day have not had one person properly explain it to me because i've never seen it be successful either they can't like right okay and you can use like suck for luck and like all these situations like (laughs) it doesn't matter where are the Super Bowls? I need to see the rings, and I don't. I don't see them. You will not see them. Right? It doesn't Why? happen that way. I don't think you can create a culture of losing and flip it to winning that fast. And normally, the people who start to losing never make it through to have a chance to win. You know, so you're always restarting something in those situations. So, uh, and you said it. You get all these assets, uh, but the asset has to turn into players. But you win and you change the culture by draft picks, and that's when I bring it back to the Browns. You <laughs> drafted pretty well and gave the Browns a pretty good situation, so much so that as a Ravens guy, as a Steelers person representing, like they're talking about the Browns winning the AFC North, one of the most competitive, hard nosed football teams, football divisions in the NFL. Mm-hmm. So you've kind of laid the foundation out in the in the draft for like. Is it is it that one player? Is it that drafting that one transitional guy? Is it is it the Baker Mayfield? Is it the Patrick Mahomes? Is it could it be the Mitch Trubisky? Is it the Aaron Donald? Like is it is it all all the X's and O's? Are we talk about schematics and stuff? Is it really just that one player? I think it's more than one. I think it's a combination of players um, because you know there's offense, defense, and special teams. True, uh, but you have to have someone who the fans and who the organization truly believe that they can hitch their wagon to and he's going to get it done. And uh, at Cleveland, it's Baker, uh, and it's Miles Garrett. You know, And those guys are two uh, first pick of the draft players. Mm-hmm. And so if you hit it right and you do it right, you have a chance for success. But if you don't, so just imagine if you screw that up. Right. You know, now you're going, just going backwards again. Mm-hmm. You know, and that's why I said the asset has to turn into players. And that's the key to all that. And you also said a lot of the times that the guys who are involved in mm-hmm. the tanking situation don't see it, th- don't get to see it through. You don't get to. to the success. So all the talk about you know, well, it tanks and we got Baker Mayfield and it worked out. Like, well, yeah, but there were casualties in the, along the way, and it's not just you. It's the coaching staff and their families and players that were involved in that that are yeah. now like looking like they're not good players because mm-hmm. they had. Mm -hmm. not good pieces around them and not Mm -hmm. a good culture. So it's a bigger picture to me than just, uh, you know, trying to get the top guy. I love her. (laughs) (laughs) Well, that's the human side. I've spent a lot of time around losing organizations. Well, she's thinking about the human side of it. Yeah. I mean, there's there's more to it than just the team and the organization. There's a lot of other people that get affected, you Mm -hmm. know, in these situations. And I also, and this is really what I've been dying to ask you, because – 
you have a, a reputation that's attached now, which mm -hmm. likely will Brian Flores Absolutely. will have if this goes on for a couple years mm -hmm. in Miami. You have a reputation that's attached now to part of the Browns losing culture. But how much power or did you have in those decisions? Like you get paid with Carson Wentz and passing up on Patrick Mahomes. And there's other people that were in the room when those decisions were made. So I don't think that a, a, a one coach, maybe Bill Belichick, maybe Andy Reid, maybe Pete Carroll, you know, there are certain coaches that have the final say in those situations. Were you one of them? Joy, I'm gonna leave that alone. Okay. Okay, moving on. <laughs> Okay, that's fine. Um, but but all I'm saying is that's that's why it's not ever that simple to me. So like, if you're gonna use the Browns as an example for why they are being they are successful now, it, there's a lot of layers to that story mm -hmm. that don't just include like the head coach making all the decisions or what happened on Hard Knocks or whatever. Okay, fine. Moving okay. on. Um, speaking of the Browns, <laughs> speaking of the Browns, they are very. Uh, they've got an attitude about them, mm -hmm. which I love. <laughs> Um, now, traditionally, I hate the Browns and everything about them, <laughs> but I don't like duds because I'm in the business. So right. I, I, more stories, everyone be great. That's more competition. It's better for everyone. So I want them to be at least discussable. But I am a Baker fan, mm -hmm. and I thought the Baker should have started right away. And they have an attitude about them that I don't think I've seen in like the modern NFL, mm -hmm. which is they don't really have any evidence of sustained success. Right. But... but you would think they do because they have a swag that's almost I, I, I'm, I'm being delicate when I say this because I know what it means. Like it's almost a, a drop, just a few little drops of like a early 2000s Miami Hurricane mm -hmm. uh, attitude swagger yes. about them, except for not the success that the right. game's had yet. Right. So where is that coming from? Like where is that vibe and that energy coming from? Is it just Baker? Well, first let me back up because you mentioned that you wanted to start Baker um, early. Thank you, yes. for, you, thank you for like, backing up to yeah, that You felt like he should have started right away. I was right a away. very strong advocate uh, against Tyrod starting. And I was too about Baker having a chance to play. But I'll go back to it. I was the head coach and not the owner and not the GM. Well, there's an organizational decision that we made mm. before we ever drafted Baker to play Tyrod Taylor. And I you, people act like they don't understand that. We made a commitment to a guy that we traded for that we we're paying $18 million to who had been in the playoffs, taken a team to the playoffs when take go back a couple years before then. Who was playing quarterback for the Browns before then? No, no. I'm not saying Tyrod wasn't, wasn't no, no, no. a viable starter. No, I'm with you. No, no, I'm with you with that. I'm saying, but people still got to understand what goes into those decisions sure. about why you're not playing the first overall pick to begin with. We had already made that decision. That was a decision that was discussed. We said, this is what we're going to do and how we're going to do it. Right. It's just what I said to Baker, I never get telling him, at some point in time, you're going to play. I don't know when. I don't know how it's going to unfold, but you will play. And there it was. Tyrod got hurt. Thursday Baker night. goes. He, Baker goes in and plays, and the rest is history. I could have put Tyrod back in as a mm -hmm. starter. I knew that at that time Baker was the right guy for the Cleveland Browns. Yeah. So that's how that unfolded, contrary to what everybody thought. You know that. Well, oh, I, I didn't want. I, I, I believe that that and was not the, you, but no, no, no. But I, a lot of people thought that I didn't want to play him. That oh, oh yeah. you didn't want to give him a chance to right. play. That wasn't it. You had a team that was one in fifteen, zero oh, in sixteen. Yeah. They needed to trust and believe in something or else I couldn't stand in front of them anymore. Mm. Yeah. I already told them Tyrod Taylor was a starter. So, oh, by the way, no, I'm taking him out. I'm going to put Baker in. Right. You, you can't do that. Yeah, no, I never thought it was because you didn't like Baker. Right. Um, I, uh, again, I, I don't know, and obviously we're not going to find out today right. what <laughs> happened in all of the draft rooms, but I didn't think it was because you didn't like Baker. I think it was just, like you said, it was like a commitment, like Tyrod's proven right. and he needed to establish some culture. I just, I'm, again, mm -hmm. like I said earlier, I'm a believer in you get better. Those by guys playing. playing. Oh, yeah. there's no question about um, that. Okay, so second part of it, where is the swagger for the Browns coming from? It's Baker. Mm. It, it is Baker. There's no question. He is. Um, I, I've said it before. The guys kind of like to pipe Piper a little bit. You know, he has a way about him that people believe that he can get it done. I noticed it when we went to go uh, watch him prior to the draft. I watched how he was able to. Um, you know, kind of bring the rest of his teammates with him and how they relate it to him. There's a belief in him, and he has a swagger to him that says, I'm going to win. And uh, I think that is permeated through their football team, through their front office, through everywhere. Now, the key to that, you got to go do it now. Mm -hmm. You know, he has to go do that for the city, for the football team, for, for everything. So 
it's yet to be seen, as you said, but at the same time, there is a hope and a belief that he can get it done. Well, seeing is believing, and we just saw the Browns put out a, a – they came even at mm-hmm. the end of the season. Mm-hmm. Is that fair? Like, they're, yeah. something that they hadn't done in a very, Absolutely. very long time, Falling Baker, mm-hmm. who leads this youth movement, but – People are starting to listen now because now the Cleveland Browns have more money on them going into this football season right. than anyone else in Vegas. Is there any validity to like swag can't win games, no. but but I've been on teams that when you see someone making the plays mm-hmm. and you're like, oh, maybe we can do this thing. If he's lighting up, we play with Golden Tate at Notre Dame. There's games we we're out of, and he was just like, I'm just gonna pad the stats. A wide receiver pad and stats, we're back in that, but we're right. back in that football game. Absolutely. Right. So there, there's an energy around it, but it, do you think that things like things that aren't tangible like that are they sustainable throughout an entire football season? It's hard. Uh, I'm not going to kid you about that. You want it to be. Mm-hmm. You hope that it can be, but there's so many variables that go into this. You right. know, how healthy will the team be? You know, what what? How is the team that they're playing against? You know, mm-hmm. are they healthy mm-hmm. or not healthy? Uh, who are you playing? Is it on the road? Is it at home? Is the weather? All these things go into it. So um, I think the human side says we want to believe that it's sustainable. Right. Uh, but I think. I know the real part of me knows that there's so many other variables that go into it, but I rather have people feeling the way they do today True. about what they're dealing with than what they have been feeling mm-hmm. because there's a belief and a hope that they can get it done. So they have a pretty solid team on paper right now. Mm-hmm. Uh, so we know all the, the positives about the Browns. If there's going to be something that is an issue for them this season. I think a lot of people feel like what happens if you lose three in a row, mm-hmm. you know, or you have some sort of injury that you have to overcome. What What's the mentality in the locker room when that happens? What What is their uh, biggest weakness um, or what will be the thing that would keep them from being successful this year? I think you kind of hit it. We don't know if that swag will come back after you get hit in the face mm. right, and lose a few games, you know, uh, because you put it out there so strongly that basically you have a feeling you're not going to lose. How are you going to handle disappointment if it happens? And I think that's going to be the key. Um, everybody's value right now is tied to them winning, you know, right. and, and things are going to go perfect. Well, what if they don't? What if the value you started with after week five or six didn't plummet, you know, and everybody's now talking negative about you? Mm-hmm. How are you going to deal with that? And I think that's going to be really the key to their season because it might not go exactly the way they want it to. And it might go exactly the way you want it to. Nobody knows. But that's that's the, the hidden issue. Well, Hugh, we really appreci- appreciate you coming by the podcast. Thank you. Um, and keeping it real with us as well, yeah. as much as you can. <laughs> yes, of course. Um, we'll, we'll speak for the rest of everything that happens. Uh, but make sure you check out Hugh's tequila, uh, Grand Lienda, uh-huh. uh, organic tequila. Uh, I'm going to try it out. And we are, we're showing a picture of it right now. Um, and you can check out the website at Wally's Wines. Wally Wines. Wally Wines. Uh-huh. Wally Wines. Okay. Um, thanks so much. Hopefully we can have you in Thank again. Thank you. Appreciate you coming by. Thank you so much. Thanks. With it. Come on. With it. Quit. What? Quit it. We about to turn up in this bitch. All right. What am I winning or quitting today? Joy. The NFL season is officially here. Woo-hoo. Let's pick so our division mad winners. Heller did. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> As you should. Uh, let's pick our division winners, our wild card playoff teams, and predict who's headed to Super Bowl 54 in Miami. Wit it or quit it. Um, with it. Let's yes. do it. All right. Let's start with the AFC East. Mm-hmm. Um, Dolphins. <laughs> is, they're it's in very there. hockey. They're there. They do play in the AFC East division, yes. but no. In fact, the Patriots are going to win the AFC East again. Yes. For like, what is it, the 40th year? Um, since 2003, they've won it every year except for the year that Tom Brady was out with an injury. All right, so 2007. Yeah. Uh, Chad Pennington, I believe. Yes. Dolphins. That was a fun – that was a fun – Yeah. Was that Dolphins or – No, no, it was Dolphins. Oh, I was thinking maybe Jets, Jets pet Chad Pennington. Mm-mm. Okay. No, it was Dolphins. Okay. Well, yeah, so – awful. This a, it's a wash? Like, what are we talking about with the AFC East? It's the Patriots. Okay. All right, moving yeah. on. All right, AFC cool. West, uh, obviously, it's the Chiefs. Yeah, it is. Chiefs. Great division, yes. but it's going to be the Chiefs. It is going to be the Chiefs. Uh, Chargers knocking on the door. The Raiders have Antonio Brown and John Gruden on their team. That's nice. The Broncos finally got a quarterback, but it's Joe Flacco. They do have. They always have someone playing the quarterback position. Yes, to their as most football teams do. Yeah, um, that's about it. The AFC North. I am going with the Steelers. You would. Okay, that's that's smart. Why? 
Ben Roethlisberger, okay. Juju Smith-Schuster. Okay. Their defense is better. Mm-hmm. They're still a cornerstone franchise in the NFL. True that. There hasn't been any noise out of camp. No. Very quiet. Yeah. Very quiet. Steelers. Okay. Um, I've been going back and forth. I'm – the Browns are going to win the division. Okay. I, and I, a lot of money is going to them. Pick, a lot of people picking them in Vegas. There's something rotten in Denmark there. I can't see it on paper. Per se, so I gotta just go with my gut and think the Browns are going in the division. I'm not gonna be putting any money on the Browns. Um, I know it's, a, it's a good value bet, but no, I'm not gonna do that. Come on, you have to. Like some people are in these uh, was it suicide leagues? What are they called? Did you play one game and suicide you get knocked pool? out? Yeah, I suicide we, pool. We decided we we're calling those elimination pools now. Oh, we did. Okay, I missed that memo. Um, <laughs> yeah, but sometimes you have to pick the Browns. Like you're so oh, okay. Well, yeah. If I'm you know in that I mean? situation, I'm saying I'm not putting any money. Like I'm not gonna go bet the Browns to win the division or win the Super Bowl. Right, um, right, right. Okay, moving on. AFC South. I'm going with the Texans. Mm. I yeah, Texans. I just, I wanted not to pick the Texans. I thought about it. Another tough division. Yes. And again, like we're just giving our predictions now, so we're not counting for any like major injuries or anything crazy that's gonna happen. This right. is just face value what we're doing. Everyone does this. This is what we're doing. So don't pick it apart. It's just a prediction. Everyone relax. I'm going with the Texans and you are too, because that makes sense. I was gonna go with the Jaguars. They're not they're gonna win they're gonna win week one against the Kansas City Chiefs. But other than that, yeah, the Texans are gonna win the division. No, they're not. Uh wild card, I'm going with the Browns and the Chargers. Ravens and Chargers. Okay. So the Steelers are missing the, super, the the playoffs again? Yes. Okay. Yes. That's interesting. Um, I'm gonna disagree, but okay. I don't. I really don't feel that great about the Chargers. Wait a minute. You know that they don't have Antonio Brown anymore. The Steelers. Yeah, I know. Okay. I yeah. just want to make. You just... No, I, I'm gonna go with the Browns to make the make the playoffs because I, I just it would just would be an international disaster if they didn't. Yeah. And I just don't think that they're going to win the division. So I think they're going to be good enough to make a wild card spot and then lose first rounds. Um, and Chargers the same. I just I don't have a lot of faith in the Chargers this year and the Melvin Gordon situation. I think I think while everyone's freaking out about how much they don't need running backs, I think it's going to be that pendulum swing again where right. it's like, yeah, actually you do need a great running back Everyone to win. Them, yeah. um, all right, moving on to the yeah. NFC, the NFC East. I'm going with the Eagles. Really? Why? When did you? What did, what, why Eagles? I mean, that's my pick. Yeah, what are you arguing with me for then? I thought you liked the Cowboys. I figured you. I mean, the NFC the East essentially switches who wins the division every single year. Right. They just like rotate because mm-hmm. that's such a tough division. Right. It's obviously not going to be the Giants or the Redskins. So, uh, based off of that fact, that yeah. there hasn't been back-to-back uh, winners since I don't know what is it, two thousand three or something. Uh, maybe even further back, I'm going with the Eagles this year. That's I mean, The Eagles are, are going to be a great team. A lot of people are picking them for the Super Bowl. I'm not, but I think they'll win the NFC East. Uh, NFC West, I'm going with the Rams. Seahawks. Got Seahawks winning the, the NFC West. They yeah. just got a, another piece on defense. Russell West, Westbrook. Why do I say that all the time? Russell, I don't know, Russell, well, I don't know how to say the name. Russell Wilson. Sierra Husband. Mm-hmm. He gonna be good. He stay good. He does. Your husband good. good. No, everyone is. Everyone is. That's strong. That's why that, Seahawks. Is, that's insight right there. He is good. Uh, and everyone is writing off the Seahawks this year. Really not even paying attention. Wait, to wait, them. wait. You got to defend the Rams though, because I, I mean, mean they, they were in the Super Bowl last year. Sean McVay. They're not taking a tremendous step back. Like I know everyone's freaking out. Like super. I don't think they're gonna make it back to the Super Bowl. But they didn't fall off a cliff. They had a mixed match of these free agent players, like an all star. NBA team and those players aren't there anymore. Aaron Donald is still there and he's very nasty on the new Madden, which is unfair. But most I just of don't their core it. is still there, and I'm, they're going to win the NFC West. Okay, who's going to beat them besides the Seahawks? Like I, I, I can, I can get with you on no. the Seahawks, but nobody else in that division is close. True. Um, NFC North Packers. Aaron Rodgers. Aaron Rodgers MVP this year. Okay, Vikings. <sighs> Vikings. NFC South. I'm going with the Saints. Now the NFC South is like. Pick them. It's just impossible. It, it, like anything can happen in in, in that situation. Yeah. I don't think the Saints are going to have a hangover from that horrible call situation. Right. I haven't heard anything about that situation in yes. a couple of weeks, which is pleasant mm-hmm. as a sports fan. They so I think they're finally moving on from it. Mm-hmm. Thank God. Um, and so I think that they win the NFC South. Panthers got to go. Cam Newton so up and down. It was very down last year. I'm expecting the up betting on the up. Christian McCaffrey another year in the league. I don't know. The, Pan- the Panthers are they're too much of a wild card, and they could turn out and win 11 games. Yeah, this season. they totally could. I don't love the ankle situation with Cam, which is yes. why I'm hesitant about oh, that. Geez. But, um, I, I'm you know, like I said, the NFC South is is whatever you feel like. Right. Uh, and then the wild card, I'm going with the Cowboys and the Seahawks. Saints-Bears. Bears are, Bears are knocking on the door there. I think there's no way they don't make the playoffs, even though I don't have them winning. 
that NFC North just because I'm a Vikings homer. So you don't have you don't have the Cowboys making the playoffs either. They don't have a running back. And right, but like in five minutes they could. I know, but that's 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 a quick turnaround from Cabo to to week <laughs> one. So you think is he it's going to come back and be a disaster? I don't think it's going to be a disaster, but he's been a distraction enough that I've seen last uh, was it two seasons ago we saw what the Cowboys did distracted by Zeke Elliott going into the season. That's fair. You know? I just I don't think they're going to miss the the playoffs. Okay, so running back really quickly, um, AFC East Patriots, Patriots, AFC West Chiefs, Chiefs, AFC North Browns, Steelers, AFC South Texans, Texans. Wild card, Browns and Chargers. Ravens, Chargers. NFC East, Eagles. Eagles. NFC West, Rams. Seahawks. NFC North, Packers. Vikings. Vikings. <laughs> NFC South, Saints. The Black, I mean, Panthers. And wild card, Cowboys, Seahawks. Uh huh, Saints, Bears. Let's so, inexplicably, do it. Brandon has the Steelers missing the playoffs this year and the Cowboys also. All right, so my Super Bowl pick. Okay. AKA, um, dear sports gods. Yes, listen now. We have been so patient. And we're so grateful for uh, for everything that you've given us. We're just really, as Fox, as a company, praying for Chiefs Cowboys, which is what I want. Woo! AKA my prediction. But like, also, I'm speaking into, into existence. If you Chiefs don't. Cowboys yeah. would be fun. Very interesting. Yes. I like that. Super matchup. Vikings. Vikings Chiefs. I mean, you take that dirt out of your mouth It's right Vikings now. Chiefs, George. Vikings? Yes. Ugh. There's an anomaly every so often in the league. The Eagles were in the playoffs, and then they won the Super Bowl without their starting quarterback. I'm telling you, Vikings can string it together, so the, so, wrap it together. So the Kirk Cousins is going to is Adam going Thielen, to Super Bowl. Diggs. Like, their defense is a lot of good guys, but not big enough for names other than Harrison Smith. Shouts out. I think the Vikings have been knocking on the door of being – this, it's a long even, shot. I don't even have the it's Vikings. It's a long shot. Okay. I don't even have the it's Vikings making the playoffs. Um, but then you don't have the, the Cowboys making the playoffs right. either. So uh, I would take only, I will only accept as alternatives in the AFC, the Steelers or the Browns. Browns, I, I don't Browns. see this year. Steelers, obviously, still a possibility, but yeah. not, I don't feel strongly about it. So the Chiefs must be the representative for the AFC because I w will not tolerate another Patriots Super Bowl. I was about to say, that's the clear answer. Yeah. And it's no hate. Like, all, all due respect to the great Tom Brady and Bill Belichick. Like, we get it. You guys are amazing. We're just tired of watching it. It's boring. And last yeah. year, the fans have spoken. Like, ratings were down. People are tired of watching the Patriots. Actually, that's a good point. We should enjoy this football season now because we know at the end of it, we're going to see the same team again. We're going to see the Patriots. We're going to see Tom Brady and his new lipo or by whatever he's got on his face. Shouts out. He looks great. Looks young. He's glistening like he's pregnant. I'm glad you said that because I'm not allowed to say that. Well, he, he looks great. He, he, he looks, looks great. Young. He looks great. He looks vibrant. Fountain of youth type is Not normal. He looks great. Yeah. No hate whatsoever, obviously. Yeah. Um, and the NFC, I would accept as alternatives to the Cowboys against the Chiefs, uh, Eagles, Packers, and Saints. Eagles, Packers. Stop with the Packers. Stop it. They're not going anywhere. Listen, I think Chiefs Cowboys is an incredible matchup. Aside from the fact that they're yes, the is. two most exciting and talked about and storyline teams. You just came from Kansas in, City. Okay, yeah, but <laughs> also, <laughs> also they just signed Lashawn McCoy. They've yes. got Patrick Mahomes. Okay, Andy Reid. Andy Reid. All right, that's an incredible storylines there. Yeah. Yeah. Dak versus Pat Pat Mahomes. This is America. <laughs> I'm saying, like, that is no, I feel you. that's hype central right there. Yeah. That would be incredible. That would be an incredible Super Bowl week. Yeah, it would be fun. And Miami, too. Ooh. Forget it. Ooh, the storylines. So People you want the Vikings, arrested. huh? You appreciate that? I, you know what? It's not a sexy pick. I'll take yeah, substitute you, for right, NFC. Fine. No, no, no. Since, since your pick is uh, not sexy, can you, can you give us the Hot Girl Summer pick, please? Yeah, Hot Girl Summer pick. Uh, ooh. Ooh. Um, Cardinals Browns. How's it not hot? <laughs> the two hottest the quarterbacks and the young ones. I don't know short. why I expected a serious answer out of that. That is a That's the hot girl summer pick. That's hot. Ooh, that's hot. Cardinals. <laughs> Baker versus Kyler Murray in the Super Bowl. This Kyler next Murray one. even talk? No, that's the thing. That's why this is hot. This is sexy. We don't even know. We haven't heard from hot girls since they put out the track. It's not a group. Yeah, this is weird. All right. This is a weird <sighs> connection, but y'all hear me. Y'all got it. Maybe I'm crazy. <laughs> <laughs> hear ye, hear ye. Lakers are petty. Mm. So Lonzo, by the way, doing great interviews recently. Lonzo? The new Lonzo. Yes, yes. I, 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 yes. I'm just going to lay it. Yes. I wish he was still with the Lakers, but yes. He's yeah, doing me good too. Job. But yeah. he is, he's, 
he's really um not evolved's not the word I want to use. He's just grown. Into his you know? ball body? Um his that's ball- not what I'm referring to. Okay. Uh but you know, just when he does his interviews, he's a lot more confident now. I actually think him leaving the Lakers was a good thing for him. Yes, yes. And he'll come back and he'll come back even better and stronger. Yes, I like Was it him that. leaving the Lakers or the nest that you think helped him? Um, it's probably a combination of both, yeah. but I, but I actually think that the pressure and the situation with the Lakers was not good for his development. Right. So I think he's going to be in a better basketball situation in new Orleans. Mm-hmm. Anyway, he spoke about what happens with the trade and he found out on Twitter. That's how he found out he was traded from the Lakers. Come on. And look in the past, like we've, we've heard all kinds of stories of guys finding out they got traded on the scroll and ESPNs. Right. Like we've heard lots of those stories it's 2019 you you gotta give somebody a call i mean come yeah. on like you gotta as soon Sometime as it goes through up. you gotta call somebody even, right. even a text i mean shoot a text it takes right. 2.5 seconds you yeah. can't you can't be that dude but they move you faster no you just andrew luck found out it, that's what i'm saying like the whole that's a perfect example of you can't control the narrative sometimes if you're in the actual conversation, like you're the Lakers and it's about to go through, you shoot Lonzo a text. They're like, yeah. yo, I got to talk. At least be like, yo, I got to talk to you. And then if he finds out on Twitter, it's like, sorry, it leaked. But you know what I mean? Yeah. This is what it is. You can't, You it can't be you found out on Twitter. It's too, it's, it's unacceptable. I mean, at Notre Dame, we found out Coach Kelly was coaching us and Charlie Weiss got fired on, on ESPN. We were just all in our dorms watching ESPN. We're like, oh, uh, we got a new coach tomorrow. Yeah, that's Bush League. You know I'm what I'm sorry. Saying? Like, like, it's, a, it's not cool. Right. That's, that's a, what I'm saying. It's an example of how not to do it. Right. That's how it's done, though. I, but it shouldn't be, though. Right. Like, it's yeah, there's right. a certain level of, like, respect you got to have in that situation. Lonzo Ball is the number two overall pick. Like, come on. All right? I don't care how long the trade talks have been going on for. I don't care that it's Anthony Davis. Like, I'm on Lonzo's side in that spot. You can't let him find out on Twitter. There's that's just got to be, like, a standard for for how that whole thing works. And I get it. Like, stuff leaks and it, it gets out there. But just – like you said, shoot him a text. Yo, got to talk. <laughs> like, do something. Have, yeah. have some kind of situation where it's not like he's just driving around, like he said, leaving his grandpa's house, and someone calls him, like, go check Twitter. That is not okay. Yeah. Um, but we will see what happens with the Lakers this year. Obviously, I am anticipating a wonderful plethora of stories. Uh, the soap opera continues. Frank Vogel. And Frank um, what, what is it? Strive for greatness. Strive for content. I'm gonna have to find something. I don't know what you're referring to. LeBron's hashtag. Oh, strive for greatness. Yes. And you want more? No. Taco I'm gonna Tuesday. Find... No. Okay. No. 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 I'm just... What other no, hashtags? No. 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 Uh, Bronny James up next. No. No. <laughs> no. Bronny's definitely gonna get a shout out on Sierra Canyon though, right? Ooh. Ooh. That is a track Kanye. I gotta listen to for yeah, sure. Yeah, yes. Yeah. Yeah. That was a helpful um interjection there. Good, look at you, Heller. Boom. <laughs> It's time for high key, low key. All right, high key. Jalen Hurts had a game, and low key, Lincoln Riley is the quarterback whisperer. I mean, yeah, at least in college. Uh, yeah, Jalen Hurts uh, made his debut uh, at Oklahoma against mm-hmm. Houston on Sunday. He had 508 yards, total yards, six touchdowns, and they won 49-31. Obviously, nobody's really like. You know, thinking it's a magical win because it was over Houston, whose yes. defense is not great. But that's still an incredible game. And I, I feel like everyone's kind of rooting for Jalen. I know I am. Yes, like, yes. I, like, you should be. I mean, that, how it worked out in Alabama, like, it sucks. But sometimes them's the breaks. Like, someone yeah. gets hurt, and then you lose your spot, and then that's just how it goes. And Tua is great for them, so mm-hmm. I like that they were they allowed him to leave. Yeah, and he and, competed for the spot. Yeah, he competed for the spot. Mm-hmm. And it's not like he was a bad quarterback. Like, he lost it because he was bad. It just was one of those situations. You're slightly better. You, it is what it is. But I'm, I'm glad he is doing well, and he's in the perfect situation. And honestly, if you're a top quarterback – in high school, yeah, I mean, like you want to go to Oklahoma, right? Now you definitely do, because you got to look at these teams and these players go to places that. That's why I don't trust any Alabama quarterback, because quarterbacks who want to play in the NFL don't go to Alabama to play quarterback. <sighs> that's why I don't want to tank for Tua. Thank you, thank you so much. And so, anyways, I want to see Jalen do what he does, and but it's so it feels so weird watching Oklahoma's offense. It's like. Every game you're watching a team play on easy and see how many – it's whoever scores last because the defense is so abysmal. The same but that's, way. that's really no one, like most of college football, though, if we're keeping it all the way 100. Like how many yeah. college football teams do you think of? Like, yeah, the first thing you think of is their defense. I mean, that's pretty much what no, it's become. I mean, Penn State. 
No. I mean, but like, yes, yeah, so I'm saying everything's. Yeah, you're right. You're right. But, but what's incredible is the levels up that Lincoln Riley is achieving now. Right. So he had more. Jalen Hurts had more yards in his first game with Oklahoma than Kyler Murray had all season last year. Kyler had 478 total yards in his peak against West Virginia. Jalen Hurts had 508 total yards. And he crushed Baker Mayfield's record of 396 yards in a Sooners debut. So so Lincoln Riley is just leveling people up. Now, that said, I, I I think I need to see more of Lincoln Riley's products in the NFL. Like, True. obviously, Baker is very skilled. Right. Obviously, everyone's very high on Kyler Murray. Right. We need a little bit more evidence to start anointing him, you know, whatever, the quarterback whispered, quarterback Jesus, whatever you want to call him. But and I, I do think that there's NFL factors in that, too. Like, everyone tries to, like, compare the situations. Like, you're playing against NFL-level talent now. You're playing right. a, a speed – uh, that's not comparable to college football. So, like to say, okay, they're just failures. Like you can be have a great college system that right. doesn't translate to the NFL for multiple reasons. But that said, great start by Jalen Hurts, and Oklahoma's going to be kind of interesting this year. Yeah, more so than they have been, because obviously they were winning regardless and just putting up a lot of points. And everyone, you could turn it on and see an offensive game. But Jalen Hurts is different. Yeah. Watching the specimen like him play is different. So high key, the Cowboys will have Zeke back. Low key, Bye. great. Get to the Super Bowl this year. That's all I care about. All right. Now they sign Leo Collins, uh, Leo Collins, um, to an extension. Mm-hmm. Um, crazy story he has too, by the way. Like, you, you know what happened with him? Remember no. on the draft day, it was like he was being accused of murder and complete, like went undrafted. He was like a first round pick and then went undrafted. No. Yeah. I'm doing my research is on on Lima. Yeah, crazy story. Um, it turned out to be false, false accusation. I don't know, it's a complicated situation. But anyway. So he's gonna come up. Um, yeah. The more interesting thing is he you didn't need to do these extensions. So I don't know what Jerry's up to other than he's just saying like send a message yeah. to Zeke. And now Shannon Sharp reported on Undisputed that Zeke did come back to Dallas. Right. Which Good I thing. mean smart move like if we're if we're actually getting to the point where you need to end this negotiation. Right. There was some ridiculous numbers being thrown out there unconfirmed, so I'm not going to repeat any of them until they are, but look, you got to have Zeke. It sounds nice that you're going to use Tony Pollard, it's adorable. I love it. Everyone be positive, you know, kumbaya. It's great. But Zeke is the best or second best running back in the league. Yeah. And you're not going to win a Super Bowl without him. Like, I'm, we're just keeping it real. If you're not going to pay D- Dak because you don't think that he's capable of it, then right. you most certainly need Zeke. Yes. And if you're, if you're going to try and get some leverage by going through the first four games of the season, that's cute also. But what happens if you go two and two? But Ty, Ty Gurley did a disservice to running backs as a whole in the NFL. It is kind of on Todd Gurley, yes. Yes, he got all that money last year. At least year. temporarily right now. All types of weird antics like not scoring and different things that he did. And then at the end of the season, he his wheels were broken. He couldn't even go. So paying running backs a lot of money, especially when it's already under contract, it just feels messy. Well, Zeke's situation is not ideal, obviously. He had two years left, so no one really saw this coming to begin with. Like, obviously, Dak was the priority in the situation, but right. Zeke be. has tilted the tables when it comes down to that. I just think that Jerry didn't appreciate Zeke holding out, A, two years ahead of time, mm-hmm. B, being in Cabo, because I don't think that's that's great optics, yes. and C, I think this idea that like they're, they're going to like strong-arm Jerry Jones, it, it just... It's not going to happen. It's Jerry. Like, Jerry's going to use all the leverage he possibly has, even if it means – now, Jerry's – like, Jerry is not scared. Jerry's no. about that life. But He, he will problem. fire a Super Bowl – multiple-time Super Bowl winning coach and go 20 years without winning another Super Bowl to prove a point. Yeah. So, Jerry's not scared now. So – But you're fighting against Jerry Jones' ego versus, like, the betterment of what the Dallas Cowboys need to win a Super Bowl. I'm with you, but that's why I think it, at the end of the day it gets done because I do think that Jerry wants another Super Bowl, yeah. and they're not going to do that without Ezekiel Elliott. So. True. Loser Power Rankings. Loser, loser power, power Rankings. These are the losers, the losers of the week. I'm good to have you back, by the way. I got you there. You did. Color last week was ready to go. Right oh, on cue. I, I tried to do like a fake look off, like I wasn't that's ready, but I was just, just so ready. But he no, stayed ready. Is that is that a compliment? <laughs> Heller's eager to please. Um, no, I just think he wanted to be on it because hey. he was filling hey. in for okay. you and he wanted to do a good job. <laughs> you, Brandon. I don't know what's going on here, but I'm going to move on. Um, all right, so the Dolphins, huge losers this week. I'm pissed about this, if I'm just being honest. So they traded Kenny Stills, which, I mean, we all know what that's about, and it's super weak. Whoa, whoa, whoa. We all know what that's about. I don't want to add more time to the Kenny Stills conversation because it's Kenny Stills, but what? I mean, I got to explain it. 
I, I mean, he came, he came with the owner. Like, of course they're going to trade him. Oh, okay, 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 okay. And then after, he had that, after that the, stupid after the, situation with the Jay-Z songs. Okay, I, feel, right. I feel like after the coach of his team trolled him by playing Jay-Z songs yeah. in his face, yeah. like he was Russell Wilson and the songs were uh, Future. Future. Yes. You know, it was... He was on his way out. My least favorite move by far from Brian Flores, like not not even becoming of a, of a head coach. You like that even less than not naming a starter? Yes. Damn. Huh. Yes, because lots of coaches are stuck in positions where they have to have a quarterback battle. True. Purposely, no one, no purposely one, yeah. trolling your top receiver right. over something that is completely unrelated to right. actual football. And then trying to make the excuses you're trying to teach him how to be distract the play while distracted is straight nonsense. Can't be sunning people like that. They're adults too. It's not. It's just. It's just unprofessional. Like it's not necessary. I I, I. 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 You play Jay Z at football. Like it's just like you didn't need nine in a row. I, mean, I still eight or nine in a yeah, row. Yeah, I, I still listen to Jay Z. But if it's a Spotify the playlist, it's gonna mix it up. It's you know to Heller's point. Um, so anyway, they traded Kenny Stills and Laramie Tunsil, the mm-hmm. left tackle. For uh, first round and second round picks, uh, they have eight in the next two drafts. Um, I mean, we can get into the whole situation with Larry Tunsil in Houston. They traded him to Houston. Uh, they didn't rework his deal, so basically he's going to be a free agent in 2021. That's what happens when you don't have a GM. But whatever, Houston's yes. not my problem. So basically the Dolphins are tanking. Um, shout out to Josh Rosen. I feel you. Okay, I mean, couldn't have come into the league into two worse situations. True. First year with the Cardinals, that situation is trash. Mm-hmm. And then you come to the Dolphins, who are literally tanking, and then looking us in the face and trying to tell us that they're not tanking. They're not tanking. He is. He has no hope this year. Like, the, the, like he's he he's gonna have to pull off a miracle in order to not only keep his his spot, but prove that he is a, a serviceable starter in the league. And yeah. it's not his fault. Like nothing. I don't hold anything that happens. Last year against him because of that situation in Arizona or this year with the Dolphins. That said, I will never understand, and I need someone to explain it to me, why people think that you can create a losing environment and a losing culture Mm -hmm. and then expect winning. Like, it makes no sense to me. You're tanking. So you're literally trying to lose Yeah. so that you can win. But you're talking about something they said they're not doing. You're right. You know okay, it, right? but like if if I sit here and look you in the face, yes. Okay, as we discussed before we started the, started the podcast today, yes. if I tell you that I'm I'm naturally a blonde, okay, yes. but you can literally look at my face, you know that's not true. Yeah. Now there's a chance, like you're like maybe right. she was a good, baby, she was blonde, work. right? Yeah. You know what I mean? But, no. but like you feel it in your gut. This is the color of my hair. Okay, yes. so. I, I can, you. you can make some arguments like, no, we're I not really you. tanking. But the reality is we look at the evidence, you guys are tanking. And I'm not saying it's Brian Flores' fault because I don't think the coaches ever want to put a bad product on the field. Right. And I don't think that they want to lose because those losses go on their record. Mm-hmm. So I don't Stay think they're them. trying. They're interested in losing or moving out good players, even if, it, even if they have assurances from the front office that they're going to be there long term in order to build whatever culture or system they want to yeah. and get the guys in that they want. I don't think it's how you do it. You stay afloat, mm-hmm. you win games, mm-hmm. you be consistent, you establish a winning culture with the guys that you have there. Yeah. Establish and then when trust. it comes to draft time, tr- make a major trade. Like trade away all the picks you have for the next two years if you yeah. if you need to move up and get to uh, or if, if that's who you want or Jalen Hurts, whoever you want. But like right. this idea that you're just going to drive the organization into the ground further than it's already been, and then the next year you're going to bring in some guy like – now we're winners. Okay. That's how we do things around here. Sure. That's not how it works. You have to you have to completely then sweep all of that that anxiety and like mm-hmm. losing sucks and it's yeah. this giant cloud and it's not just over players. It's over coaches, it's over it's over coaches' families, it's over players' families, support it's over, staff, support, all support of staff, it. the yeah. trainers and, and and the people that work in the offices mm-hmm. and the media. It's like Cafeteria. everything is just pfft. Yeah. And then you want then all of a sudden you want to just turn this around and all of a sudden you're the Patriots. That's not how it works. Okay, but there are about five teams in the NFL every year that are essentially from coaches to players, everyone's auditioning and proving that they deserve to be in the league. They're on bad teams, they're in bad situations, but they proving to the everyone else around them that they are deserving to be in the NFL and have the position that they players have. Players don't tank. I'm not saying that the players are tanking. Okay. Players don't tank for everything for every reason that you're saying. Right. Every time you go out there, you're putting out tape for another team, Auditions. for your future, yes, mm-hmm. and for your current team. So yeah. I don't think players tank. But unfortunately, front offices have that power to put in, put guys in a situation where they don't have a choice. Yeah, the wrong pieces around right. just to see what happens. Just so they can lose. Yeah. 
I mean, you have a zillion draft picks. What do you need to also lose for? They're not going to be mad if they start winning. They're, if, they, if, they're, if they're neck and neck with the Patriots. Okay, I can't even say it. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Continue. Whatever you got to say. Next. Okay, so LeBron is apparently trying to trademark Taco Tuesday. Oh, you know what the day is. Please don't do it. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not, but. Okay, just to be perfectly clear. LeBron, all right, me, uh, I love tacos. Okay, yes, my yes. favorite food. I make okay. them at least once a week. Dang, you do make good tacos. Thank you. Yes. I make them at least once a week, mm -hmm. and I very much enjoy them. Sometimes I make them on Tuesday. Sometimes it's Taco Wednesday. Sometimes it's Taco Friday. That's how you feel. It's, it is. Yeah. And based off of, you know, if I had gone to the grocery store or not. Okay. More yeah. importantly, you did not come up with Taco Tuesday, and it is actually infuriating when LeBron does stuff like this. Every once in a while, LeBron will do something, and I'm like, mm. No, you're you're like this. Ooh, I should have thought of that. No, I would never. I would never have the audacity to trademark Taco Tuesday. I'm about to. I'm about to uh, I don't trademark. I want somebody going to try and trademark uh, chicken and waffles. N no, it's like trying to trademark. But not just somebody. <laughs> somebody who should not be trademarking. It'd be like chicken me and trying to trademark chicken and waffles. Yes. Okay. All if right. Helen came to you there. and was like, "I think <laughs> I'm going to trademark chicken and waffles," no. you'd be like. <laughs> Nope. No, the f you're not. There's a set. There's a whole separate podcast where I'm I can tell you ideas that Heller taught, told me that he's doing. Doing. Well, like, we're not actually gonna talk about Heller right now. Okay. I'm, I'm pissed. I didn't come up with this as a bit to pitch to Brandon. It's yes. Okay, but unfortunately, this is not the Chappelle show, and we but, don't have that leeway. Okay. So more importantly, okay, you know what I'm saying, and I mean it. All right. It's first of all, I hate. I cannot describe to you the, the the disdain I have for that ridiculous, stereotypical Mexican voice that he does okay. for Taco Tuesday. He, does, he doesn't need to do the the voice inflection part. Like he could just, the, I mean, you know, I mean, if I do it, it's, even it's if he bad. just yelled, "It's Taco Tuesday," right. just like that, just in a yeah. normal voice that you normally speak in with your he normal don't. sounding voice. This is a different voice. It's a different voice. Yeah. Thank you. I'm yeah. glad that we can now mm -hmm. openly have this conversation because yeah. I've been avoiding this conversation for mm -hmm. a long time, but now it's officially time to have that conversation. Okay, so I, here's an example. YG has a song, Go Loco, or whatever that's out, and then, Maria, Maria, Maria. He says someone's name. I think that may have been safer, but because I, 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 sometimes I mistakenly say Ariba, which is <laughs> not right and not correct, so but you just can't say that. Like, <laughs> Somebody, it, LeBron has traveled enough to know he what he can and can't say, and I cannot believe he's doing Apparently not, and apparently nobody who's close to LeBron has let him know either, and this encouragement of this nonsense is, is, is enough. I the gall. Enough I defend LeBron James to the death. The gall of him to trademark talk. And we're Let's, not even talking about, like, that... The part that bothers me is not even the most obvious part. Like that that part, like, okay, everything right. we just said, facts, no arguing, okay? Right. You shouldn't be doing a stereotypical Mexican voice ever, but in today's climate, please, honey. Yes. This side of it? Yes. You think you came up with Taco Tuesday? No, nah, he knows he didn't, <laughs> but he thinks he can make even more money off of it. Honestly, if this he wins this trademark, I'm never saying it again. I, I won't. I, I will probably never eat tacos on Tuesday ever again. Well, I can't, no, I can't, don't punish I can't, yourself for I his mistakes, yeah, right. Joy. You know what? I don't, don't deserve do that. that to do that. This yes. is California. We but, eat tacos whenever we want to. <laughs> yes. we, that, just, we just My whole thing say is, it respectfully when maybe we Maybe I'll just use lettuce Listen, instead it, of <laughs> the actual If Taco Bell hasn't even tortilla. trademarked Taco Tuesday. Yeah, that's a failure. Like, what do you... I'm pretty sure Taco Tuesday has been... You've been that Mike's been you've been struggling with. It, all day. it agrees with me. This is yeah. we're done with Taco Tuesday and LeBron. Um <laughs> anyway, the point of the matter is is like I had to tolerate this Taco Tuesday nonsense right. and and I was willing to ignore it, but now it has reached ahead and I think we can all agree we're done with this nonsense. Fifty two Taco Tuesdays to come a year. It's gonna be exciting. And back is a cheat. Um all right. Finally, Team USA is is kind of looking like a disaster. So yeah. they JV barely team. survived Turkey. Turkey has some good players. In overtime. Look, Team USA is... They used to. The, used to be yeah. the standard for international basketball, okay? Like, yes. the Dream Team is one of the most nostalgic and, like, celebrated, not just a Olymp like group of Olympians, just right. just athletes and, and it, stories. Mm -hmm. Like, it's, I can't even describe what the Dream Team is and what that means. Right. To go to that, to surviving Turkey in overtime right. just because Turkey missed four straight free throws is, I mean, and look, I can't blame guys for not playing. I don't blame them. No. After what happened to Paul George, I would not risk my career for Team USA either. 
but it, yeah. it's it's especially, bad. The, especially when the games are being streamed on someone's phone versus national television. It, it just the whole energy around it. Basically, the NFL's or the NBA has been top heavy. Well, now we got the JV squad. They're going to start bringing college players into it eventually because it's the only thing we can do. Well, this is bad. This then, is not interesting. Then Jason Tatum also rolled his ankle, so that's Yikes. great. Yeah, Kimber Walker's leading the team 15 points. You know, stuff like that. It's not good. It's good basketball. It's not good. All right, what's in the Migos Culture Report? Brought to you by the director of Road Trip, Old School, and the Hangover Trilogy, Todd Phillips and Joaquin Phillips. No. Todd Phillips and Joaquin Phoenix. Yes. Is that how you say Joaquin? Sure. I can't believe I say it. Um, both team up to give us the Joker, a new origin story for the Batman's arch enemy played by Hakeem that follows fa- Ugh. <laughs> Listen, let me tell y'all what's going on. I got this. Wait, listen to this. Joker coming out. Warner Brothers doing it. The Thank guy who gave you. y'all the hangover them, he gonna be doing it too. That's crazy. Joaquin Phoenix, they just they just premiered it on Saturday at the Venice Film Festival. Had an eight minute standing ovation. They said it's about to win an Oscar. <laughs> They did. That is they so did. Obnoxious. They said, and I'm going to tell you this. Eight minutes? It's, yes. Eight I would minutes. fight everyone in there. <laughs> eight minutes? You stand up and clap for eight minutes? Eight minutes? It could be that good. It, nothing in life is that good. Joy, if I was in the, the premiere of Help, the Help, I would have stood up eight minutes clapping. <laughs> and I ain't even seen the whole and movie. And you would regret that now. <laughs> Imagine, imagine the movie ends, people start clapping. You slip out to come to the bathroom. You come back, people are still clapping. That'd be great. You'd be like, what the hell is that going is, on? Yeah, you'd be like, what just happened? Is like, they, show the, they show the end credit scene. Damn it. That is peak Hollywood nonsense right well, there. Okay, And I am see. usually a defender of the elitist, but that is ridiculous. Okay, for all the Do people. Do you know how long eight minutes is? I, it is long. If I started now, I'd be surprised. We can get the whole thing done in eight minutes. Honestly. So listen, let me say this real quick. Uh, for people who are not happy about DC and like, questioning like okay is it going to be as bad as all the justice leagues that we've seen this is going to be the start of a new like universe called dc black which Uh you could just call it dc dark or the bad guys or something like that but dc black is getting rolled out and they're following elements of like early martin scorsese films so this is supposed to be better and it could be oscar worthy there's a lot that you just threw at me that i was yeah i'm I'm reporting the news it's in the culture Um, okay okay well i love the trailer i love uh walking phoenix i think it's going to be a great film not eight minutes um standing ovation wise but i'm excited for it via kim kardashian's twitter kanye west is coming out with a new album on september 27th his wife tweeted the infamous track list of her husband's ninth solo project titled jesus is king kanye's personal relationship with god jesus religion as a whole has been a complicated one but has led to some of the best music my ears have heard joy you hold gospel music and a sacred place in your heart are you here for a Kanye West gospel album? I am. I'm here for all gospel. Let me run through the track list. Okay. Clad, which I had to look up. That's monothe. That's like we're all from one thing. Okay. Right? So clad, that makes sense. Garden. Okay, maybe I should have read. Sella. Mm-hmm. There's a bunch of biblical ones. Uh, God is, <laughs> baptized, Sierra Canyon, hey. hands on, wake the Sierra dead, Canyon. water, through the valley, Sunday, sweet Jesus. Uh, all coming. sound great because it's gospel. Right. Um, you know, I've softened on Kanye. Okay. I, I think I'm about to uncancel Kanye. Because and I'm 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 on the because, same. Because uh, you know, I watched the Chappelle show thing and I think I'm tired of canceling people. Thank you. Just kidding. <laughs> I can't believe she got me. You might as well have a little dollar. Oh. <laughs> Too quick, too quick. But I am considering uncanceling Kanye. You should. Yeah. Well, I mean, uh, I have stuff to do today, so uh, I'm gonna listen to it, and I'm probably gonna like it because Kanye's a genius. But I'm just done canceling people, period, because it's just a lot of energy. I mean, it is a lot of energy. You gotta keep up with who um, did what, and it is it is hard to keep track of when you cancel them. They're still here, so it's like. Uh, you're not allowed to tweet. You're not, yeah, you're not. You're, you're pretty much not allowed to tweet. Or That's like, kind of Instagram a blessing for a while. for them. Actually. Acknowledge their existence in on social media. Yeah, you can't claim them. Yeah. There's oh, like a whole book. That's a win, depending on how you look at life, but yeah. I feel you. Um, it's, you, you generally don't want to get canceled. Just right. Yeah. Well, right. well, speaking about canceling people and all the whole cancel culture, uh, Kanye West said George Bush doesn't care about black people. 14 years ago today. Yes. it was yesterday. Yeah. Yesterday was today, not today. Tomorrow. Yeah. He, yesterday. he recently said it. Recently, mm-hmm. yes. Um, he did. Years anniversary. He did, and it's some of the best video. Um, it's some of the best use of a Ugh. recorded device Ooh. that. Yeah. Planet Earth has ever seen or experienced. Mm. He put Chris Tucker in a really tough spot. He did put Chris uh, Tucker in a tough okay. spot. Because if, if you cut it after the Mike Myers, it's f- 
fucking hilarious. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But then, as but soon then as if you, you see go to Chris Tucker and it's like doing live TV, that is just that is a situation like the the absolute like you're sweating. Right. I can't even imagine right. the just. Trying okay. to remember your line. You've got one line. You got to yeah. read it. You went from that to rocking MAGA hats. So it's like you know what. A yeah, lot has happened. A lot has happened in 14 know. years. I would agree with that. Yeah. Um, so also shout out to Kevin Hart. Hopefully he yes, uh, recovers well. uh, quickly. His wife did say he was doing well. He was in a very bad car accident. Mm -hmm. Shout out to Lizzo. Yes, number Truth one. Hurts, number one. Took two years, but we're here for you, Lizzo. That's what I say. As I mentioned last year, last week, you were not here. Lizzo is my Beyonce. I like that take. Thank you. Lizzo is the new Beyonce. No, she's my Beyonce. Okay, that's fair, but. She is the. New I'm willing Beyonce. to share. Okay. You you well, you can't ha you have the monopoly on Lizzo. Yeah, actually I do. I've been on Lizzo. You you have you did put me. On. That's why I say I tell everyone Truth Hurts was such an old song because you try to put me on way back in the day Thank and you. I was like I don't know what that is. I'm not a hipster about a lot of things. Brandon, who's your Beyonce? Um, Kevin James. I was gonna say Ray Lewis. Ray Lewis, don't. <laughs> Listen, I I don't know how to handle. My love and appreciation for Ray Lewis. <laughs> period. It's Calling very him your complicated. Beyonce seems like the way to do it. No, I that he yes he's acknowledged me before in this building and I was like almost faint like I'm done being starstruck because but it's also it's Ray Lewis. It's, so I'm right. Um, God praise be to God. That's what yes. Ray Lewis would say. Um, he would. To God mm -hmm. be the glory. Yes. Let's church say amen. amen. Um, also, between the two ferns, it's now going to be a movie on Netflix. I don't know what to make of it. I, have you seen the preview? No. Okay. You got to watch the preview. Between Two Ferns is going to be hilarious. Yes. I'm very yes, excited very for so. it. Mm -hmm. um, also, we all watched the Chappelle Show stand up. Yes. If you're not, you should. Educate yourself. Let me. How do we sum this up? It's peak Chappelle. Peak Chappelle. Yes. There should be nothing about it that surprises you. No. If you grew up watching the Chappelle Show, he had the stage kind of mirroring what it used to look like when he was setting up between sketches. Like, it's just what he does. Ooh, did he come out to that Dead Press song he came out to on Chappelle Show? I can't remember why you do that. Chappelle why I was show. I look real smart on this whole thing show. until you did. Yeah, that. why do you do stuff like that? Why are you doing I'm it? So, I'm so eager, you guys. I couldn't help myself. Probably yeah. Yeah. No, 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 it did. It's just I don't know why you do that to me. But yeah, it was great. It's Chappelle. It's very funny. Um, it's some it's some problematic, quote unquote, problematic things and concepts to wrap your mind it's around. It's what Chappelle does. Yeah, yeah everything about it is what Chappelle does. He moved to Ohio. <laughs> when he went away for a long time on purpose to get material to come back with <laughs> about the American people. Thank you. Yeah, yes, I would say that. Also, just you weren't here last week, so we yes. were really nice to Hello last week. So if we're being mean to him today, it's because that's what he, that's what we usually do. It was weird when they were nice to me. He was a little nervous. I literally talked to him afterwards as I had to go. He's like, it was weird. They were nice to me. <laughs> And he's like, and I was like, and I was like, and I was like, yeah, people are nice to me too. And I was like, oh, but I'm nice to them. He was like, no, if you're on air that day, they're nice. Period. And I was like, yeah, just try to just be Heller's, nice to Heller everyone. Was introduced to what uh, talent is. Yes, yeah. exactly. How was that? You did a good job. It felt weird. Thank you, you for saying job. that. I said I want to say good job. <laughs> See, that's how it works. Yes. Right. Yes. How yeah. did you do today as a producer? Good. Great. Great. Is, is that? No, you did a good job. Today. I mean, you did oh, a good so job. Yeah. Yeah, he kind of lost it with the you know opening of the Chappelle show song question. Yeah, shout to Dead Press. And now we're I, everything go, else was really good. Yeah. I, I enjoyed strong. your commentary. <laughs> Let's talk about something. Else. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thanks for joining us this week on the Maybe I'm Crazy podcast. Thank you to Hugh Jackson for yes. coming on, keeping it real. He was very uh, very gracious mm -hmm. to come in and sit with us. Um, and so uh, you know he didn't say anything, but I think he got my answer. Mm, yes, I think we got some nonverbal answers that we haven't got. Um, only if you've been paying attention, you right. know, life is all about paying attention to the details, mm. you know? Yes. It's not the, it's not the mountains, it's the pebble in your, in, in your shoe. That pisses you off? No, that doesn't apply to this at all, but okay. it's just, you know, I just wanted to use a metaphor to explain that Pebbles you need to pay attention mountains. to the details. Yes. Anyway, so if you're going to participate in the Maybe I'm Crazy Fantasy Football League, we have decided to do it last minute, Whoa. last minute decision, but you yes, can email micpodcast at fox.com. Put your name, your hometown, and why you want to be a part of it. The cutoff is tomorrow at noon. We will do the draft tomorrow night at 7 p.m. Pacific time. Sorry it's got to be so late, but I have another draft tomorrow. And I got a lot of stuff going on, unfortunately. Yes. Um, and so does Brandon, which is actually has much more important stuff than, <laughs> on than I do. But yes. anyway, the point is uh, we're doing the draft will be tomorrow night, Wednesday night at 7 p.m. Pacific time. So that's 10 p.m. Eastern. I know that's super late. Sorry, guys. Um, email micpodcast at fox.com to be a part of the Maybe I'm Crazy Fantasy Football League. 
Um, check out Brandon on social media at Newman Show 99, myself, Joy Taylor Talks, and the podcast at Maybe I'm Crazy Pod. Follow on YouTube mm-hmm. um, or subscribe, yes. I should say. Um, subscribe on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. We're also on the iHeart Media app and SoundCloud, so everyone want to listen. No excuses. Um, congrats to the football season finally being here. Yes, we made it. They've got to do something about the preseason. It's entirely too long. Yeah, the summer was very long as it well. Felt, no, we are not done with summer. Okay, Stop never mind. it. I okay? did not say that. All of you fall people, by the way, relax. All right? Hey. Fall, fall's great. Everyone loves fall, but let's just enjoy the summer because you know what? You fall people, you're always complaining about winter. Oh, the winter's so long. It's so cold. Uh, well, you were so hurt. You're so excited about your stupid pumpkin spice latte. Yeah. Yeah, that is true. There's a difference between fall people also, and just Also, you can get people. a pumpkin spice latte anytime you want. I think... No, you can't. It's seasonal. You can make them at home. Jeremy is our basic B cor- uh, <laughs> correspondent, and he says that it is seasonal. Any questions about Casey Musgrave, Jer- pumpkin spice lattes? <laughs> Jeremy, Jeremy's your dude. Jeremy has one thing that he just cannot let slide once a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> it used to be like uh, once a month. Yeah, but now, now it's, it's once a podcast. <laughs> something <laughs> will be said that he does not agree with, and he is just gonna get. He has something to say about it. Doesn't matter. No mic. We don't need it. So you are Y'all a pumpkin me. spice latte fan, I suppose. Not, no. No. He, but he knows it's seasonal. But you know that it's seasonal. Yeah. Yeah. I know. <laughs> Thanks for that, Jeremy. Um. All right. Well, anyway, chill out, fall people. I know football's back, but we still got a couple more weeks of uh, good weather, so let us appreciate it. Yeah. Um. That's coming from someone who lives in California, so I... Uh I still want some sun. Anyway, um, thanks for joining us, and make sure you check us out next week. And, of course, Brandon will be doing the Brandon Newsman update on Friday morning. Yes. So any stories, uh, obviously responding to Thursday night. Nope, just kidding, because you do that earlier. Um, any new stuff stories? to work out. We got some logistically <laughs> sticks, yeah. new dates, There'll football new season. New on Friday morning yes. um, from Brandon Newsman, and then check us out next week. Thank you for joining us. Bye. Maybe I'm crazy, maybe I'm crazy, maybe I'm not.